The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is a Four Center podcast feed. On that, checking my notes makes me Ken Napsock. I am Joseph Scrimshaw. And I am Jennifer Landa. The gang is all here. We are all here. The new year 2023 is up and running, which means we've got some Star Wars news to discuss. A lot of rumors today, but it is breaking news from a long time ago. Go before we do that. We want to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com slash four center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, maybe your Android, your Kindle, or MP3 player. Wherever you want to listen to books, I'm sure you can get it. So again, go to audibletrial.com slash four center. A little bit later, we have a four center recommends an audiobook we think you should try out on us. But let's, before we get to the news, which will be in just a couple of minutes, remind you that we have an ask going on. It's a big ask. It's an exciting ask because it's it's working, to quote <laughs> young Anakin Skywalker, Joseph. Yes, our current ask is to reach 7,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, we're doing a lot more stuff on YouTube. We have our monthly live Q&A, and we're going to be debuting a new show called Figure Fights, where we ask which character would win in a fight. Not the actual character, but rather the specific action figure of that character. And I lost many hours of my life this weekend looking at different <laughs> action figures to pick out some of the matchups. So that's coming soon. We want people there to uh, enjoy it, to join us there. So we're trying to get to 7,000 subscribers on YouTube. It was really working. Uh, like Anakin's pod race engines. And then it <laughs> sputtered a little bit. Also, like Anakin's pod race engines. So we're in the good position now, Ken and Jennifer, of, mm. of being underdogs. We're slowly crawling to 7,000. I think we yeah. can make it, but it's in doubt. We're crawling. We're crawling. We'll get there. It, it's time to uh, bring in some new eyes and ears to the Force Center world, which is uh, part of the reason we're doing this. Also, it's just been fun. It's just been fun to unlock the cameras, show our faces a little bit more. Not that you can't see our faces other other places, but it always was. Uh, <laughs> I love the comments of, "Oh, this is what you look like." Like, "Oh no, I, I, you can find many videos of what I look like." Out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fan and friend, uh, this is. It's been a lot of fun. So yeah, Joseph is right. We are getting there, and we uh, are challenging ourselves to uh, ask all of you. So. Uh, good stuff there. We're going to do our life and Star Wars adventure section here before we get to all those news, uh, newses, newses, uh, news bits. So Jennifer, we'll bring you in here first to catch us up on life and how Star Wars found it. Star Wars, again, uh, did not really find me, although the Bad Batch is out and I, I will be watching it today. But you know what I did? Ooh. I got caught up on Willow. Star Wars adjacent Lucasfilm. I <laughs> love this show so much. And it was actually exciting to see that it had been trending on Twitter. And it seems like there is a larger fan base because I was getting kind of worried. I felt like, gosh, it doesn't seem like many people are watching it. There are a lot of people watching it who the show was resonating with, who are, you know, shipping characters and mm. just getting into the nuts and bolts of it. I just I was so excited. Um and I really recommend it. The season finale is this week. Uh, the seventh episode, which just aired, is so good. It's just a fun fantasy show. Mm. You know, we don't have to worry about, I, do, was there a comic book in 19, whatever, right? <laughs> it's just, I get to watch it and enjoy. Mm. And the acting and the, the camaraderie between the actors, if you follow them on Instagram, really fun to see. Yeah, I want to jump in real quick there and do also a cheap plug for my show, Castaway Talk, which we've been reviewing, Willow. Uh, but I shout out yeah. to uh, uh, Alden Diaz and Nikki Kumar kind of been leading that side of it because I realized, hey, this show doesn't connect with me as much as you. It's time to get you you all on here who are connected. And But the show has grown with me. The first episode was like, okay, I see what they're doing. This last episode, episode seven, uh, was yeah. one of my favorite things. Uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, and I really agree with you. It, it, the show knows what it wants to do and that doesn't mean it's for everyone and that's okay. And there is a performer who plays the character of uh, Bo, uh, Bo, Borman, excuse me, Umar yes. Chad, uh, uh, Chad Patel is his name. I want to make a look him up here. Oh, I'm going to follow him on Instagram because he is a fun, he's playing this character Borman that is belongs in Star Wars or at least his performer. Oh, yeah. belongs. I don't want to typecast anyone. He would be a perfect kind of scoundrelish Jedi trying to figure his way. <laughs> oh, just a scoundrel smuggler himself. He's so funny and so great. And I, I'm just loving the show too. Mm hmm. That is great. I continue to be uh, deeply Willow ignorant. Still have not even seen the film. I'm clearly going to just have to have a Willow weekend where I watch everything. <laughs> one go. Yeah. yeah. 
That's great, Jen. Sorry, I cut you off there. I, I got excited. Yeah. I, I think it's important to let people know that, hey, if you love something, there are little pockets of love and appreciation out there if you want to find them. Yes, absolutely. My, my dog, if you hear her caller, Mala, Mala Tobuk just entered the chat. Uh, <laughs> Mala is a labradoodle in my world. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> a fantastic show. Highly recommend it. And, uh, two big paws up there from Mala Tobuk. Huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, beautiful. Joseph, you guys? Joseph you, you, you were out here surviving the rain on the West Coast. Anything, uh, anything good this weekend? Yeah, as we were talking about uh, off air, I'll take the rain over the absolute pounding of wet, heavy snow in my homeland of uh, of Minneapolis, Minnesota. So the rain is is not bothering me. It's been uh, making it so I'm having you know lots of fun time inside. Uh, Star Wars was just some great adventures of just watching some great Star Wars and really um, enjoying it. Um, we, we've got uh, I've got some schedule stuff this uh, week. I have a pitch when we would normally record our Bad Batch uh, episode. So I watched the screeners that we're very lucky to have early of that third episode. And that uh, uh, episode's amazing. I can't wait to talk about it. I was just kind of uh, I always enjoy Bad Batch, but I was blown away by that third episode. Mm -hmm. So that was a great start. And then uh, my wife was working uh, late uh, Saturday. And I was like, well, I could watch a movie or I could finally do it. I could finally try to binge all of Obi-Wan Kenobi in one sitting. Uh, uh, so I had a frozen pizza. I had some cherry whiskey <laughs> and some action figure friends. Uh, and I watched all of it. And in, in, I paused uh, for like 15 minutes uh, to go find the whiskey about halfway through. And that was it. And man, man, was it great to to watch it all in the flow. And I always love to watch things to, uh, you know, discuss them and uh, review them on the show and be a part of the cultural conversation. But it was really great to just watch the show um, the way I always watched Star Wars when I was, you know, a teen and a young adult of just like, I, I've seen this. I know it. I know the parts I like. I know the parts I'd be like, mm, I'm not sure about. And I just enjoy it. I just enjoy all the little moments. And uh, I, to be clear, I, I really enjoy the whole big picture show of Obi-Wan Kenobi. But it was great to just sit back and watch Moses Ingram's performance. All these just lovely Reva moments. So many great uh, moments uh, of just quality time with Kenobi. I like the show. But even if I didn't like the show, I'd be like, I'll watch this to just watch quality Kenobi moments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a moment in, uh, in episode two where there's like yet another problem on Dayu. And he's just got this great deep sigh and like, oh, man. That's it. That's life right there. <laughs> and that Kenobi moment. Uh, there's, and there was a ton that I enjoyed um, getting to see it all now. I had forgot that Reva straight up asks Owen uh, in the first episode, do you think you could defend your family from me? I had just totally forgot that how much of that was set up. Um, how clear the arc is of what it means to be a Jedi. All sorts of great stuff really, really popped for me watching it like one long movie. Hmm. That's wonderful. I, I was texting with our, our friend of the show, former guest Billy Patterson. Uh, he was saying he and his wife, Allison, were, were doing a Star Wars rewatching for the first time ever. They're putting Kenobi into the mix, right? Ooh. And it's, it's just from Revenge of the Sith that just flows so nicely. And I, I got it without permission from Billy. I want, I want to quote his uh, a wife, um, Allison, who uh, said, and again, she's not plugged into anything that's gone on. She hasn't heard uh, that the show's got, haven't you heard bad writing, bad acting, and, and Joby <laughs> Harold never watched the prequels was a short that popped up uh, oh for me this weekend. She said, this is pretty remarkable that this exists. It's awesome. And to me, that's the thumb, <laughs> thumbs up that we need. Mm -hmm. uh, so love that. Love that you got to do that, Joseph. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it uh, so much, and I have uh, many thoughts, but I'm going to edit myself now because we have other Star Wars things to talk about, but it was a really great experience. I really loved it. Ah, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, my my weekend experience was different. I, I, I was going to come in here, and I, I was going to roll up my sleeves and really upset some people. Uh, I'm going to pull off a little bit, though, here. I, I, I spent hours, hours. I watched, like, nine votes of the Speaker of the House votes. I had seen Span on. I watched, and that's a long, that's like 400 names the clerk's got to read. I watched were you, them. Were you, were you playing Fortnite at the same time? Uh, I Actually, yes. Yeah. For one of them, uh, me, our buddy Ken Plum, and Hal Lublin, we had it all on in the background. <laughs> we're just playing Fortnite, a bunch of 40-year-old men playing Fortnite in the background. You just hear, you know, uh, all names being called out and McCarthy, Jeffries. Um but at the end of that, and when it all happened after the 15th vote, I, I was watching the, 
I don't know. Let's just say I was watching two different uh, speeches and how they connected to light side, dark side energy in Star Wars that we study a lot on. And I was just uh, mm. reflecting on uh, how we have dug in deep into Star Wars the last few years, how it's changed a lot of my own perspectives and how you can kind of, I don't know, now you are Leo DiCaprio pointing at the screen going, ah, ah, you have energy that destroys. You have energy that's built on power and the craving of more power and the difference versus building up uh, and inclusion moving forward. And I was going to go in deeper on that, Joseph and Jennifer. I was going to go in, maybe really upset some Force Center fans uh, who are hanging on uh, from uh, <laughs> one view of life, which is yours to have. Uh, and then uh, the other thing happened. Um, a friend of mine uh, texted me a, a, a YouTube clip and said, have you ever seen this? And it was the bad lip reading of Yoda's uh, and Luke's uh, moment in Empire, the infamous Seagull's Stop It Please video. Uh, <laughs> which is perhaps one of my favorite things in Star Wars. <laughs> bad lip reading videos are, are, are fun and, and sometimes, you know, it's a joke that I, I can get tired of. But for whatever reason, that one when it dropped back in 2017 was it just got in, I, we would sit around a collider. We're supposed to have this meeting every day at 9 a.m. And we would just watch that video until we were <laughs> dying laughing, uh, crime. And I hadn't seen it for years. And my friend, uh, he's again, a little unplugged. And he was like, have you seen this? I was like, Oh, have I seen this? I, I've, I've probably <laughs> stopped work watching this. And I, uh, and so I had the two different sides, the deep and profound part of star Wars that applies to real life. And then just laughing, at Yoda singing about seagulls hitting them on the coconut. And I run, run. I could be your backpack while you run. And I just was like, you know what? I love living in this galaxy. It's it's all extremes. It's all sides. And it's all fun. So that was my yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday into this morning. This is pretty Good. deep Star Wars adventures from the profound to the absurd. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to laugh at Yoda singing about seagulls to maybe distract yourself from other things, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's yep. true. So from all that, from all that, uh, send your uh, letters, care of Kat Navsock at Force Center. We are going to dive into the news here. And we will say, as we said last week and maybe last couple weeks, we get some more rumors to roll around in. We don't mind doing that. We try to uh, avoid that. We try to wait for official news. One of the things you've heard us say, and we might say it again. In fact, I'm saying it now is, hey, be careful. Sometimes those rumors... Uh, get treated as facts even months later. I forget the question because I was watching uh, Alex and Molly Damon's Star Wars Explained Q&A video this weekend and there was one question that popped up and I was like, well, that's not that's not a fact. That's just something that was reported. There's not going to be that series or that's not going to be in the show. I, I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, and, and no anger or shade at anyone asking the question. Just sometimes you have to remind ourselves. And I think even I fall into that sometimes of like, hey, that's happening, right? Oh, wait, no, that was just some report. It might not happen. So, we're diving into that. Uh, Joseph, did I uh, did I explain it once again okay? Oh, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Is, uh, Sean Levy, right? Um, is that? That's is it, one of them. Yeah. That, yeah. Because yeah. that, that was the one that we talked about a lot where um, I think it, it, mm -hmm. I think it's true that what Sean Levy himself is uh, reporting, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that he's in talks. But remember, then we went to the Wikipedia page for Sean Levy. And on Wikipedia, it just said Sean Levy is making a Star Wars film. Oh, that's wow. I think that's what we're talking about of like, yep, that kernel is true, probably that he's in talks to maybe make one. But then in our world and in our discourse, that becomes, yeah, the Sean Levy movie is for sure happening. When's it coming out? And right. that's the disconnect. Yeah, absolutely. And then it even slides down to like I was on my uh, one of my streams the other day playing Fortnite on Twitch and talking about the Ahsoka series. And I just was like, I wait, Thrawn is in it. Right. Or is he not? Has he been cast or you not? I don't remember. I don't know. It just seems as though he is because the internet wants it. Uh, and uh, we know we're kind of going to Rebels 2.0. So that's where it kind of gets a little murky. And I uh, we understand that. But uh, we also want to dive into this stuff here. More on the Damon Lindelof-led, Charmin Obed Chinoy directed Star Wars film. This news is coming out. Um, Jeff Snyder, who uh, a lot of us know from the Collider Schmodown Worlds, was reporting on this on the show Hot Mike. Uh, mostly just yelling at a microphone that the Star Wars film will be casting uh, what he describes as a uh, POC, a person of color woman in the lead. He said that POC, POC over like, like, a, all right, I'll move on. Uh, and it's uh, targeting a December 19th, 2025 release. Um, he's operating off a tip and currently has no more information than that, which he did say. And it should be noted, Jeff was one of the first to report, if not the first to report on the Lindelof project even being a thing. So this is a rumor, but it very well might track. He is a movie news reporter. So we'll dive into the whole story here. Thoughts on a possible lead. 
Uh, Joseph, I'll bring you in here. Uh, what do you feel? Save me. I'm drowning. <laughs> oh, no, you, you're you you're doing fine. We're, we're both splashing around in the kiddie pool having fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I believe on the show, he reported a, a, a person of color, a man, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I think said he had additional reporting after the fact and tweeted out that he was uh, speculating that uh, a woman right. would be cast. Um, right. Yeah, I think I think much like we were just talking about, like uh, from everything I know of his reporting, he has connections. And I have no doubt that the connection that he has told him this or he inferred this from the tip he was given. So I have no doubt that that kernel is true. But I think that's what, what I'm thinking about more and more with these rumors of like mm. just because the individual a quote, the individual perspective that one reporter might have got from one source might be true that second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't translate out to that's the whole picture and that is what will be, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. it's almost like, you know, uh, hey, I've I've uh, I've literally experienced uh, tornadoes in the Midwest and I could report to you on the tornado from my house and my experience is true. It is not the entire picture of the storm and what happened mm -hmm. across town because I don't know. It's my okay. perspective. It's not the big picture and i think that's the way i i really want to want to take these especially when it's somebody who's got a good track record and i'm sure their their mm -hmm. source is accurate in this moment so that that's kind of where i start with the nature of this reporting i believe that <laughs> this reporter's source believes that right now <laughs> right. that in the t-shirt form <laughs> and what do you think Yes. Well, I have thoughts. So first of mm. all, I go to like the timeline of things, right? So we know that they're working on the script. The script is obviously, I'm assuming, done. So then I think maybe they're having discussions right now. Who would we want to cast? Uh, unless it's already in the script. It could be in the script that maybe the that they want to have an actor of color based on mm. the material itself. Or I don't know if I was casting a Star Wars movie I, as a WOC and POC, I would say, let's have a POC <laughs> in the lead role. Could be good. Could be interesting. Uh, this could just be discussions that are happening. Yeah. I imagine that they, if they are going to be starting the casting process, they're going to have a smaller group, perhaps, of actors that they're going to want to bring in. And I, and I, having worked in a casting office, I'm sure it will say, submit all ethnicities, quote, yeah. unquote. But they might already have a desire of what they want. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is I, I get a little troubled when things are, the headline is, POC, person of color, is sl slated as the lead of the next Star Wars movie. And it's just that. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it's important to share context. What does this mean? Why is this important? Why should this be celebrated? Because in my, in my experience as a WOC, when I just share that news like that and just drop it, there's going to be a group of the fandom that's going to get really angry and riled up, mm -hmm. want to create campaigns, want to to create reels and YouTube videos. Get in their car and get angry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Who are gonna who are gonna rally against that? So already you're starting off on a negative foot. And I think we have to be careful. Like if you're gonna share that information, that's great. If I okay, if that's really happening or that's what your source is telling you, great. I think it's important to follow up. Why is this a good thing? Mm. Why is this significant in the world of Star Wars? You know, mm. why is this a smart business decision? I just think that it's just, it's almost feeding chum to the sharks if you don't mm -hmm. provide some sort of context. Um, and also we should, uh, they, this people should remember, POC does not just mean a, a black actor. It can be, you know, I saw the list of names that people were throwing out on Twitter and they were all primarily uh, black actors. Well, there's all sorts of POCs, right? It could be a Latino. It could be, uh, you know, Steven Yoon was somebody that came to mind. In my mind, I was like, oh, he'd be fantastic in a Star Wars uh, movie. So there's there's many different races, ethnicities. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot there. Well, yeah. If I think if someone was, you know, slowing down when talking about it, they would uh, they would understand the full scope of that, right? Right, and and not just how uh, certain certain phrases, words, titles, uh, initials start to become they get 
pigeonholed in the conversation, I think sometimes. And I think, I, I think that's kind of what you're saying, Jennifer, too, of just like pulling back in the whole picture when you're talking about it and why it's significant and, and what it could be. And it's not a, uh, not a buzzword for your reporting, I guess I should say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just want to say one quick thing. Oh, yes. yes. Because when I tweet, whenever I have tweeted the word diversity on Twitter, I would get flooded with, uh, they're not trolls per se, but they are people that maybe have that search, like somehow enabled to where, bam, like within minutes, I get people mm. attacking me. How dare you want to have diversity with your buzzword and your wokeness? And I, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm trying to provide context, but you're just pouncing on me. You're not even really understanding what I'm trying to say because you have diversity that's like such a trigger word for you and mm. i i feel like that's kind of what this feels like uh yeah. it's just yeah, well, you know yeah yeah i'm sorry sorry for laughing i was just uh, I, yeah. your, your example that you know I, I i i hate these woke people with their, their trigger words like so what is woke to you why are you res- why do you why are you searching for the word diversity to be upset about <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. i had to laugh too Using it in your speech after you've lost for 14 votes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's a right. yeah. I, if, if I could jump in with, um, uh, I want, I think Jennifer, you're so right to talk about the why of it, right? That's what um, mm-hmm. I think often when it's possible to diffuse anger and have a conversation and build understanding is because we can talk about the why and we can talk about humans and our, our shared experience and how, you know, uh, diversity seeing different viewpoints also helps us celebrate not only what is different about us but what is the same as about us you know Mm -hmm. the why for Mm -hmm. me that's what's valuable and what is in all of this our our discussion of do we trust this reporting how is it reported the the glimmer that it's exciting to me is the why if this is all true is uh damon lindelof seems to be on board is this you know executive um producer Mm -hmm. who is shepherding this film through maybe more films and again, if all the reporting is true, has selected a really interesting choice for a director, an incredibly accomplished human mm-hmm. in Charmaine Obed Shinoy, who, again, if people aren't familiar, you know, go read uh, her just Wikipedia entry. She has won, won multiple awards, including uh, an Oscar for documentaries mm-hmm. about issues of social justice for women in, in, in Pakistan. Um, Damon Lindelof is coming off of running this room for uh, the Watchmen Mm -hmm. that was, in my opinion, a very successful, insightful, powerful, important discussion of race in America. Mm -hmm. Um, These creators were to look at their most recent work might want to be telling a story within the Star Wars galaxy that deals with the idea of uh, diversity or you know, inclusion or conflicts that come up because the people cannot find a, a way to uh, see the humanity in one another. Um, mm. Any issues like those within the Star Wars galaxy, which to me are, they're, they're a big part of Star Wars. So much of the theme of Star Wars is not judging people quickly, trying to find common ground, trying to work together, uh, down to explicit storytelling about the Empire's, you know, straight up xenophobia. So it, it's not new to Star Wars that these ideas would be explored, but it's interesting to me that is that a part of the heart of the project mm-hmm. because of where these creators are coming from? Yeah, I love that. Taking uh, every beautiful word, both of you just said, uh, you know, combine into this idea of uh, it isn't just some check list, check the box type of film casting to, to sit down with the, this crew, uh, the, this movie that they're putting together, that whether it comes out on December 19th, 2025 or later, will have, I think, great purpose behind it. We just finished a series and or that had great purpose behind it. And I would argue that all Star Wars series have great purpose behind it, playing with these themes. And so stopping to analyze uh, this and on the possible lead, not just being um, – a buzzword, both with uh, you know this uh, the POC, which is uh, you know Jen touched on there, but also just the top five actors that you want to get cast in it. Like you know, great Jen Ortega, great she can dance in every Star Wars movie she wants to play. <laughs> that's, not, that's beyond the, the the thing, and that's why I don't like participating in those kind of shows anymore. Where it's just it's so empty, it's so surface level stuff to me. And what you're talking about, Joseph, is it getting me excited for this project uh watchman is a is an important series that i i tell you i didn't even sit and watch it i, I listened to most of it grace watched it uh <laughs> and it is a show that taught me a piece of history that i was never taught mm-hmm. and a lot of people cite that show it's going whoa whoa wait a minute that was real 
the 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 Tulsa riots, the Tulsa massacre was real. Uh, I was never I was never told that. And I think if they bring that same kind of energy, put in the Star Wars galaxy, there's a big important why behind the casting choices here. Uh, and 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 by the way, we're, no one on that show, Hot Mike. Not, we're not saying that they're doing anything wrong. We're just saying that the, it, this spirals out of control from these kind of headlines, these kind of right. conversations, these kind of rumors. And you're go, you, you, unfortunately, you're gonna always have angry guys in cars. Fortunately, you're always gonna have people on YouTube uh, and other social media uh, platforms and digital media platforms riling everything up. But a lot of times, one of my big things is how you discuss these things, how you discuss these stories. You might not be leaving the door open, or you might not know it, but you're leaving the door open to a lot of those people to come in the back door to start start setting fires. So uh, we want to give the big picture there, if that makes uh, any sense there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, for me, it, it, there's also just like there are a ton of actors that yeah. I like. So, uh, you know, I don't want the conversation to just be this sort of uh, betting pool of who's mm -hmm. going to be cast. Um but for myself, as long as I'm trying to engage with it with the why of like, why would this, you know, uh, is there a story reason that this phenomenal actor is there? Maybe there's not a story reason. And all that matters is this actor is phenomenal. And I'd love right. to see them in Star Wars. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it, 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 there's uh, multiple ways to look at it. But I get excited, too, of like, hey, man, you know what? I hope this reporting is true because I I want it to be personally deny Guerrero because I mm. think she's phenomenal. And I've yeah. she's been one of my Number one, I would love to see this actor in Star Wars for years. So like, I don't mind having that uh, discussion of who could it be as long as it's not all the discussion is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it gets too gamified. Uh, yeah. I think that's what you and I have, over the years have talked about as well. Uh, so there you go. That's not the end of the story, though. Uh, they went on to discuss, or, or, or Snyder went on to discuss, that uh, kind of feels that the slate of movies will be announced at Celebration, which was something we talked about and I think did take bets on last week. So there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here, full disclosure, yeah. the thing we talk about. Uh, and so uh, that's part of the discussion here. And I did want to, I wanted to, wanted to bring this up because this is one thing that could spin off, again, by no intention of those saying it. But there was this uh, moment of uh, that that feels like to uh, them on the show that the Taika's movie is dead. That it just feels like that, and possibly Feige's film as well. Uh, that it could not be in the 2027 slot either. And that's been going around as well. And not, that stuff all kind of tracks in a way, but that's not a fact either. No one's come out and said it. And again, I don't think anyone on that show is saying it's a fact. Uh, very clearly saying, hey, it just kind of feels like there's no heat coming off these movies right now. But Joseph, even off here, you said a good point of, well, yeah, if, if Lindelof's taken <laughs> off, if that project's <laughs> taken off for 2025, and it seems like it is, uh, you know, again, feels, that's not a fact, uh, this this would kind of make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not a reporter, but here's my take just to putting together the reporting of other people. <laughs> um, Kathleen Kennedy said in that, that uh, pre- Last year's Star Wars Celebration Vanity Fair interview, big discussion with Anthony Bresnikin, uh, mm -hmm. that on the film side, she was really hoping uh, for a sort of dedicated showrunner type. Uh, name check the way Favreau and Filoni are running the Mandoverse. Uh, name checking the way Tony Gilroy is just like such a partner. He's the Rogue One and or world. He's, mm -hmm. he's got it locked down mm -hmm. in that that Lucasfilm was close to maybe having some partners like that for the film side of Star Wars. So right. even that already suggested like we're going to we're not going to do the shotgun approach where three different people are making three different movies and we'll see what lands. But maybe we're going to go more toward kind of slowly building something, uh, taking that with the way Damon Lindelof has been running his career where he is a showrunner, but he is also a showrunner who seems extremely interested in bringing in more voices and being a facilitator and truly being a, a partner to other creative voices uh, is my take. Again, that's my opinion. Uh, but that just seems like it all lines up to Kathleen Kennedy found what she claimed she was looking for in Damon Lindelof and that that would make this movie the priority and that would make Feige and Taika Waititi's movies in kind of limbo right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Not for any salacious reasons either. Just kind of the business of it all. Jen, any, any final thoughts on the, this or that and the whirlwind of these rumors? Yeah, I think that's such a great point, Joseph, because that's what I love about Favreau and Filoni is that they have brought in 
other new directors or, you know, people into the Mandoverse. And as a result, that's how we got Deborah Chow Mm -hmm. uh, for Kenobi. And so I could see that with Lindelof. Absolutely. And that's what that's what they've been looking for. And I think that they found it. And that's that's exciting to me because I think that that's what people have been wanting is something, quote unquote, more cohesive, more connected in the film side of things. Um, And if he's kind of like the shepherd or whatever, or an umbrella, (laughs) um, (laughs) I, I think that could be really, really exciting to see who is part of that team. Yeah. And at the end of the day, all these rumors, all these stories, uh, I I think you said it earlier, Joseph, you, Jen, just said it right now. I'm very excited for what's cooking on this project. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't wait for some official news. I can't wait for these folks to step out on a stage at a convention near you or far from us across the pond. (laughs) I would uh, be uh, very excited to see what's going on. So that's at at the end of the day, uh, I can get a little grumpy on the rumors, get a little grumpy on the way some of the rumors are taken or reported on. But I'm excited that more Star Wars is on the way. All right. Well, we're not done yet. We're going to take a quick break on the other side of this. Uh, more news and, yes, more rumors. Have some fun with that. And uh, we got some toy stuff as well. So stick around. But before we do, we got a little force and recommend. Joseph, an audiobook we think they should try out on us. What do we have? That's right. We are recommending Star Wars The High Republic Path of Deceit by Justina Ireland and Tessa Gratton. Soon, Ken and I will have an off-air discussion about when we're going to read this one. (laughs) Yes, we will. He's almost finished with his book on the election of 1912. So this is the time. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash Force Center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash Force Center for your free audiobook. Stick around. More Force Center coming up shortly. Welcome back to Force Center. We are looking at Star Wars news and, well, you know, we're coming out of the big holidays. I wouldn't expect a bunch of concrete, solid news stories. We're playing around with some of the rumors out there. And we have this question. What is Ghost Track 17? Uh, Here we go. Uh, Reading from uh, the fine folks at Star Wars News Net, Miguel Fernandez put the story together. Shout him out uh, because uh, I do not have a subscription to Production Weekly and they they are the source of this rumor. So, according to the people who paid for a subscription to Production Weekly and then posted the info on the Reddit thread, <laughs> Star Wars Leaks. <laughs> Got it. A new Favreau and Filoni produced show with the production code name Ghost Track 19 is, is on the list there. Now, is this a new show? Like I said, Star Wars News Nets Miguel Fernandez did a great job connecting previous dots, and it could very well be Mando Season 4. Uh, production Weekly was accurate in reporting the production of Grammar Rodeo, which turned out to be Skeleton Crew. But, however, Production Weekly has been wildly off more recently with claims of Taika's movie starting to shoot in late 2022, which who knows, it may have been, but things move. And as well, not keeping up, not, as, well as not keeping up with the perpetual motion of the Ahsoka and Accolade production schedules. But again, that's kind of the nature of the beast. So that's kind of the setup. Here's the questions. Joseph Jennifer, is this Mando season four? <laughs> you know, I go back and forth. Um, it could be. I, I just, I, I don't even know P- Production Weekly. This was all brand new to me. Mm-hmm. And just the name alone to me, I'd be like, oh, that sounds totally trustworthy and reliable. Yes, they're reporting on the status of things. But the more that you start to dig, I'm like, are, are, are they? And do I trust that source? And so I, I don't know how I feel about all this, but it could be Mando season four. Maybe. I wouldn't put money on it, though. <laughs> no, that's the lack of bet. <laughs> Joseph, what do you have on Mando season four? Uh, I like our Canto Bite betting episodes, whether or not we will put uh, any Star Wars credits down on this. Uh, I think Ghost Track 17 is an eight-episode show of just Obi-Wan and Anakin bickering inside the Force itself. I, that's what I think it's all about. Uh, yeah, Mando Season 4 would make sense timeline-wise, um, yeah. I think, particularly if they don't want another two-year break between official Mandalorian seasons. You know, mm. To me, it, I, I do kind of tend to think of it as the Mandoverse and that Boba Fett is very much a part of that. Um, mm. But if mm. they really want to get moving and keep moving on Mando and want to have, you know, Mando season four out, you know, around March of, uh, how do years work? Uh, 2024 or 2023 now. If they want to have it out in another year, November of 2024, it makes sense that they're, is they're wrapping up uh, the last bits and pieces of Mando season three, that they're moving on to Mando season four. 
Mm-hmm. Well handled by both of you here. Well handled. Uh, Mando season four seems seems like the choice to me. Is it, it could be a new show, and that's the other question here. But I'll, I'll go into this here, and then we'll we'll go some final thoughts and, and maybe have fun with what it might be. Uh, this is again. I want to. Uh, I'm shouting out because because I'm just absolutely taking this this theory here from Miguel Miguel Fernandez, who I, I don't know personally at all. Just said, uh, "Is Ghost Track 19 or asked is Ghost Track 19 a reference to the hidden track on the Beatles album <laughs> Abbey Road? Track 19, otherwise known as Her Majesty. Her Majesty is a pretty nice girl. I could go on uh, making this show. My question to you all: This is from me. Is this a is this a show, Her Majesty, about Bo Katan or a prequel show about Duchess Satine? Discuss." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want Duchess Satine flashbacks somewhere in the Mandoverse. That's that's all I really care about. Um, maybe Disney Plus shows can start having Easter eggs, and if you hit the right button, you get a Duchess Satine flashback. That would be great. Uh, Bo-Katan <laughs> seems like a possibility to me. Yeah, I have yeah. I have other thoughts just about the whole big Mandoverse, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, discussion. And is this a new show or not? But but mm-hmm. I can uh, I, I can uh, pause myself on that. We'll put a, we'll go back to that one, uh, Jen. Uh, Man, she's a pretty nice girl, but she changes from day to day. This is Duchess Satine, right? It's it's a prequel, show, right? Am I right? <laughs> that is a pretty good uh, guess. I could. <laughs> See, no, no, I don't know if I could see it. Uh, Bo Katan is interesting. Duchess yeah. Satine is fascinating, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, we know that they like Mandalorians, so why not further explore the culture? But I have some other thoughts, like Joseph. On- uh, this mm. is great. They do, they do both love Mandalorians and Cubana sandwiches. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right. I love yeah, that's a great, that's a great. That's great. Movie. I would love a follow up. To yeah, uh, Favreau's chef show there because when the first the first episode they were on together, they were cooking up at Lucasfilm up, up at the ranch, and I, I don't think they knew each other as much. I think they mm. were still this was the early days, you know. And I want to I want to follow up to see the see what their dynamic is in the kitchen now together there. Uh, well, you both have a lot of thoughts, and I want to hear those thoughts on a new show, <laughs> The Men of Birds. Overall, Joseph, what do you have? Yeah, I mean, I think the, what I thought about with this question of is this Mando season four? Is this a new show? What do we want the new show to be? I think I just realized that I'm less concerned in individual shows mm-hmm. and more interested in this big picture of the Mandoverse. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, Din was our kind of he's disconnected from the galaxy to a point of uh, of comedy where he doesn't know what Jedi is. He doesn't even know the history <laughs> of the Mandalorians really in in the big picture fully. Um, and then it blossoms out into this whole story of the era. You know, yeah. we've been talked a lot about how the the Bad Batch is about the Bad Batch, but it's it's also there are tour guides to this era right when the Empire took over. Um, and I kind of get the sense that, you know, with some of the announcements uh, that happened, you know, in that Disney presentation a while back about the uh, the New Republic show, right? And about the fact that uh, Mandalorian and Ahsoka and these other shows were going to build into a big, you know, team-up show. Like, I think all, the, all those which shows are coming out is probably in flux. Mm-hmm. I think, my, my opinion is that Favreau and Filoni know the big picture of the Mandoverse. Like, that they know where Din and Grogu's journey ends, that they know the fate of Mandalore, they know Ahsoka's fate, uh, they know how much this story is going to tie into the beginnings of the First Order, you know, what it has to say about the New Republic, about the New Jedi. Uh, I think that they know where it all ends, and I think they're leaving themselves really open as they go of, how do we tell that story? Which mm-hmm. show do we tell what parts of that story in? How much of the shows overlap and intertwine Versus how much are they going to come together in a, in a big special team up versus how much are we going to break that part of the story off and make it its own show? That's the stuff that's interesting to me and, and, and relevant to, you know, is it going to, I just don't think they're spiraling off. I don't think this is like back in the day of like uh, happy days gets a spinoff and now Laverne and Shirley have a show, you know, I, I don't think it's about that. I think it's about we were telling this big story. What's the best way to package it into individual shows? So what you're saying is Mork and Mindy is coming to Star Wars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> First of all, Jen, I want to get you that scenario. I don't want to cut you off here. Uh, Joseph, you also just reminded me of what the question I heard on that uh, uh, Alex and Molly Star Wars Explained Q&A was the build up to a, I think it was phrased in the question, is a Avengers-like crossover event. Now, yes, yeah, Kathy that's awesome. did say something like, hey, it's leading up to something, but that's all. That's all we have. And so there's a large, again, at no no one's fault. This is just something I like to point out. 
you know, there's no guarantee that it is a retelling of uh, the Thrawn trilogy or or th this or that. It could be Boba Fett, Fennec Shan, and Den Djarin and Bo-Katan have dinner. And that's a crossover event at the end of the series. Who knows? I do agree with you, Joseph. I think they're, they know what they want to build to, but the path there is open. It's just not necessarily wildly open. But yeah, that was the question that reminded me of like, well, mm. I want to be careful in treating that as not just, again, I'd call it a fact because we heard Kathleen Kennedy say it. But what kind of fact or how big that fact is or what the event might be, there's a big wide open space there. And suddenly, if you get to Mando season five and Mara Jade, Talon Card, Joris Gaboa, <laughs> and aren't there and you're upset, I just want to make sure I'm pumping the brakes two years out. That's all. You remind yeah. me of that. You remind and, me. and I feel like that presentation, it was, you know, exciting is one of my favorite kind of memories as a, as a Star Wars fan with just the boatload right. of news, a lot of which has come to pass. It also feels like that was 72 years ago. And there are many things announced there that aren't don't appear to be happening. Rangers of the New Republic doesn't appear to be happening unless oh, it's yeah. this show. Um, the the Rogue Squadron movie with Patty Jenkins with the full on trailer not mm. happening right now, you know, on hold. So, yeah, we, we can't cling to everything that was announced there is verbatim. Including, hey, Donald Glover, when do you want to be Lando again? Asks Kathleen Kennedy. Yes. So there you go. Jen, uh, I knew you had some thoughts. I want to get to them. Sorry, I, I just uh, had that finger snapping. Ah, that was the question. So uh, what do you got there? That's actually where my, my mind started heading after you were talking, Joseph, because that would be kind of amazing to have all the all the Mandoverse come together in one <laughs> giant spectacle. It's something that I never thought that I would want. But now I kind of want that. Uh, <laughs> that would that'd get a lot of Disney Plus subscribers, right? And at the end of the day, that's what this is about. Um, so that's something that I never thought could happen, but I would love it. Uh, so my mind initially was like, oh, maybe it's an origin story for mm. Din, you know, and the children of the watch and like exploring Ooh. that. And mm. then reality set in. And I was like, what if this ghost track is like an animated show like a limited series kind of oh. like tales tales of the jedi and maybe it's like about i was gonna say yoda woo, uh grogu mm -hmm. and his species maybe they dive into that a little bit mm. answer some of those questions i don't know i i kind of i feel like it's like with that uh dust bunnies um mm. what was the what was the one with grogu and the dust bunnies right and yeah, i yeah. i don't know i had built it up in my mind and it was really freaking short <laughs> it was, <laughs> like it was fun i loved it but it, yeah. it was like, it was cute, right? Yeah. I, I don't want to build Ghost Track 17 up too much in my mind to then mm -hmm. just be like, yes, here is a special episode. Yeah. Uh, you know, animated thing. I, so I no shade to animation. Love animation. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, it, I love the whole Grogu thing. Just, sorry, Joseph, go ahead. Is it, is it Ghost Track 17 or 19? Oh, is it? Well, what I, is it? I'm looking at Ghost, Ghost Track 17 is the notes here, but let me let me make sure. Okay, yeah. Okay, because you said nineteen uh, a couple times, Ken. So I, was, I got I got concerned oh, that I oh. didn't know. Is, are there three shows? Ghost Track seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen? Oh, it could oh be. Gosh. It could be. Uh, Ghost Track seventeen is what the uh, article yeah. says. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to remember what the Ghost Track was for uh, the Cracker song Euro Trash Girl, which was a hidden track that came seven minutes after the last track. Try queuing that up as a rock DJ. Oh, <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry if I said it wrong there. So many numbers in my head. Four. Yeah. 17, 18. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, great stuff here. I, I, Joseph, anything more on there? I, I just want to, I, I really like what you're both saying here. I love the ideas. I love the idea of a, a spinoff series of Grogu's home planet. Uh, <laughs> was, you know, Poochie, Poochie goes back to his home planet. Grogu goes back to his home planet. Let's do it. Yeah, Grogu's uh, really dark years. Uh, <laughs> 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 so it says, like, well, he, he, somebody took him from the Jedi Temple, saved him from Order 66. We know that. And then for a long time, darkness. And then yeah. Din. Uh, this is part of me is like kind of just never wants to know <laughs> yeah, right, uh, right. What, what poor Grogu went through. Uh, I'm still, I, I don't think that Rangers of the New Republic show as uh, announced, it was nothing more than the title and a graphic. I, I don't think mm -hmm. whatever iteration of that is, there's been no noise about that. But I would love a show in the Mandoverse from the New Republic perspective. Uh, we've talked a lot about mm -hmm. loving uh, Teva Carson, right? Um, wanting to pull in good old Shriv. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'm just kind of, I'm fascinated with the New Republic in this era. I love the way they're presented in the Mandalorian that a lot of people think they're 
not living up to their their big talk. There's still plenty of you know problems in the galaxy. They're barely policing the outer rim, and yet every time they show up in Mandalorian, everybody's like, "Oh, bleep, X wings, we're in such trouble." <laughs> yeah, you know, and I love that they're being shown to have true power. But mm-hmm. how do they feel about it all? I would love that perspective. I absolutely agree with that one there. Uh, we got one final story here, but any final thoughts on this? We have a lot of thoughts on this, clearly. Uh, one of the things I was going to ask is just, I, I put this question, up, do, do we even want a new show from this team slash Mandiverse right now? Uh, which, which wasn't, an, I didn't mean that in our notes to frame it negatively, but just like, there's also a lot of areas in Star Wars I want to get to and only so much room on the slate and so much room in the budgets uh, that I, I wouldn't mind if they... They being some ubiquitous, ubiquitous Bob Iger, some ubiquitous power out there in Disney going, Filoni Favreau, stop, stop, <laughs> concentrate on Mando, and we're going to do some other shows as, here as well. And I don't even know where that comes from in my heart because I've loved everything they put out there. I don't know. So any thoughts, any final thoughts on this here, Jen? I, I love John and Dave. Uh, they are just fun and they're, they're like a great combination of fun adventure with deep mystical lore. And mm. I think what yep. really makes me so excited about whatever they do is that they are excited. It, they have fun working together and they're excited about these projects. And so whatever they want to give me, I will happily accept it because I just know that their heart is in it. I think that they'll both decide when their heart is no longer in it and they'll step away and or take a break or whatever. But if they want to give us more, yeah, give me more. Yeah. Whatever you got. Yeah. You know, and I'll pitch it here, Joseph. You, you maybe think, I had this thought the other day about Favreau. I love that Favreau's finally been like, got to Star Wars. Always wanted to get to Star Wars. I've been writing these scripts in my room for years. <laughs> now he's here. But, you know, he is a, a filmmaker as well as an actor, lest we forget, uh, outside of Star Wars as well. And I'm, I'm just wondering if there's ever going to be a moment where he's like, ah, you know what? I am, I'm going to go make, a, a, you know a live action version of Favel goes West or something like that. Which, that was not a Disney property. Uh, you know, I, I, and, and that he would step aside from star Wars. Cause I know there's a lot of this, you know, hand him the reins, every, every new show, someone wants to hand someone the reins of star Wars. Uh, and, and, and I just wonder if he's ever going to be like, great, this was a lot of fun. It's time for me to uh, get on down the road or at least take a break. I think some of my kind of opinion and take that there's a big picture of the Mando versus coming from what they have said during, you know, interviews and at celebration, you know, we we were in the room there uh, when he was like, I love Star Wars. I'm so happy to do this. And this is what I'm going to be doing uh, mm-hmm. for the next several years. Right. So th- that's why I, I don't I'm not looking at it or thinking about it as, hey, uh, Pelimoto is going to get a spinoff just because. I right. think yeah. they have yeah. a story to tell and they're figuring out how many seasons, how many shows it's going to take to tell it. And I think Favreau is in this kind of great place where he's accomplished a lot and he could probably just p- pause and go do whatever he wants, you know, mm-hmm. but what he seems to want to do because he said it out loud, like <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be doing Star Wars for the next several years and I'm happy about it. I think he's going to finish this story in whatever amount of seasons and shows it takes. And then, yeah. you know, we'll see what's next. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, and that's great. A great reminder of that moment, too. And, and happy he's here. I've been a fan of his four years. Big fan of the movie Swingers and beyond. So I uh, love having him around playing with his toys. That's all he's doing. Just playing with his toys. That's all he's doing. <laughs> right. all he's doing. Final story of the day here. I'm going to give thanks to Joseph. I was lost in the uh, you know tidal wave of rumors. Getting a little grumpy about it. He goes, what about this? What about this story? And I remember <laughs> we used to report on more toy stuff out there. This is a toy find. Uh, over 300 pristine original mm-hmm. Kenner figures were found in a collector's closet in Chicago and all are going to auction. It's dubbed the Morphe find. The values, woof, it's a lot. So, first of all, what would we do with this find? But I also got to start with this question. I thought about this one this morning. What? <sighs> I would be very aware if I had 300 figures just sitting in a closet. <laughs> I know I don't go in my storage a lot, but I, I, I have a relatively good idea what's in my storage right now. I'm always fascinated by the stories of, oh, I was digging in a box and found the original recording of the Beatles' first song. Like, how was that just, how was that there for years? <laughs> That's just one acetate or something. Like, this, this is 300 pristine Kenner figures 
which means at some point you went to like a, a JJ Newberry in 80 and bought all of them or collected them or had them and they were just in the closet. Sometimes, I'm not saying I'm suspicious, like someone's sitting on it and now's the time, the value's right. Let's say I found them. It's just, it always blows my mind that these are just sitting around somewhere. So anyways, thoughts on this story. <laughs> we'll start diving in, Joseph. Yeah, I mean, I think um, the the person who bought them bought them is kind of for their kids, but also for s- speculating. And I think might have got them like directly um, from either you know, like the back room of a store or from Kenner because I think they were in boxes. I think that's part of the reason that they were pristine is like they weren't like up on a shelf or uh, mm-hmm. that they were still in like the boxes of like here's your six Princess Leia's, you know, right. uh, in this box. Um, yeah, and and I think that idea of you know somebody who just kind of buys up some things that like yeah hey, they're making a lot of noise now um are are they going to be valuable i don't know maybe <laughs> and then lose track of it mm. uh, part of the reason this resonated with me is because i'm obsessed with action figures and the photos of this on facebook if you go to uh, dan mm. morphy's facebook page are gorgeous amazing um but also i just had this experience i think i talked about where I, you know is at home uh, with my dad going through some old photos and found all these photos of the first time i got Star Wars action figures mm. and just all of my relatives just like these are the hot new thing here you go kid um, and my dad understands that Star Wars is a big deal and he, he always tells me like hey I, I ran into another Star Wars fan that thing it's amazing that thing's just not never gonna die is it you know but from his perspective it's this thing I liked when I was a kid that's still going and he you know, we found this photo of, of me getting the original Star Wars Luke Skywalker. And I was like, Dad, do you know how much that action figure costs now? He's like, no. I was like, that one, unless there's something special about it, I don't remember, is $3,000. And he was like, what? Holy bleep. <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's this perspective of, I know it's a big deal. I didn't realize it was that big of a deal because I was an adult when it came out. Mm. Mm. I love that. I love that take on it there. Uh, Jen, uh, what do you have in your closet? You know, it reminds me because I've been helping my mom clean out her house. She has so much stuff that she kept or that she forgot about (laughs) from the 80s. Um, I've been finding all sorts of gems. So I can see how this would happen if you have a big enough place uh, and you have a lot of stuff and a lot of boxes, which I'm guessing as a collector he might have. um, I can see how this would happen. And I just went to his Facebook page, Joseph, and you're right. He's like, he seems genuinely like happy and surprised. Mm-hmm. A total warehouse find. Like he's shocked <laughs> that he had this treasure trove of all these action figures and just seeing them all like laid out so perfectly. They are just in mint condition. What a find. Oh, yeah. I, I, I wish there, there's a reaction video I would love to see when he discovered mm. that. <laughs> There you go. You all chant. And I want to shout out before we continue this, uh, in our in our Force Center Discord, one of our listeners, friends of the show, Gareth Bartlett, who's a great documentary filmmaker out there in the UK, and followed by Andrea Core on Twitter of the Core is one of my favorite uh, little facts about Gareth. He posted in the Discord that he had just uh, discovered uh, a pack, a bunch of 1977 Tops Star Wars trading cards wow. uh, in pretty good condition. He posted them in our Discord. A lot of people checking in. And uh, he even has uh, a Luke Skywalker in pretty good condition. And uh, that is uh, something that could, uh, that could fetch a couple hundred if you get it uh, in, the, in the right uh, condition to sell. Uh, so there you go. So I stand corrected. A lot of people just have things that you don't really, aren't really sure about, it, which I'm going to go out to my shed today in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gareth, good find there yourself there. Um, uh, what would we do with this find? Uh, what, what, Jed, you go to your closet and you're like, Oh man, I forgot I had 300 pristine Kenner figures here. Would you, would you keep them? Would you let them go to auction? Uh, you know, let someone handle it. Uh, you know, obviously there's some money involved. I get that aspect of it. Um, but there's a part of me, like maybe 20% that would be like, oh no, I've got to keep these. I can't let these go. I mean, there's 300. There's three of us, 100 each. <laughs> you do with your share what you will, right? <laughs> Is this, is this the end of the uh, Soderbergh Ocean's Eleven? We're all just going to slowly walk away at the fountain? I just started watching Kaleidoscope on Netflix, which is like about a heist. So that's where my brain went. Uh, we split it up. Take yeah. your share. Um, yeah, no, I'm. It's, it's like an embarrassment of riches when you have 300. Like, what do you do? Do you donate it to a museum? I mean, I want to keep some, but it's like, it's just... It's too many. It's too, I want to be able to share it with the world or, mm-hmm. or auction them off like Willy Wonka, you know, uh, not auction, give them away like Willy what? Wonka 
yeah, tickets, golden tickets. Charlie, you won. Uh, this this is great. I love I love Jen's plan, Joseph, because it might make me rich. What what are you going to do with this fund? Well, I'm I'm not going to lie. There's a few I would keep for sure. Yes, no yes. no doubt about it. And uh, I would not just kind of I, I would you know find like some collector's case and protect them and yeah. earthquake yeah. insurance and everything everything <laughs> uh, to take care of my babies. Um, but yeah, for the rest, like yeah, you I, I would want to spread the love, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd maybe want to, you know, do an auction, but then I'd maybe want to think like, eh, do I just want to hoard <laughs> that money or do I, in the spirit <laughs> of Star Wars, do I want to do something good with it? Uh, do I want to do some, you know, giveaways for charity so somebody could get one of these amazing action figures for free, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So I would try to balance um, my own uh, desperation for them all yeah. and yeah. Uh, and sharing them in a way that would uh, hopefully be uh, productive. You you both are, are hitting it right. You know, you, you little little for me, a little for you. Uh, that's the way it could work there. I I I would definitely if you have repeats, you have doubles. I'm keeping one of each. Definitely yeah. gonna do that. Yeah, definitely come on. sell sell some for charity. That can work. Uh, this easier said than done. I had a YouTube company in 2021. We tried to, half of every bit of profit we tried to donate to charity until the accountant wrote me at one point and said we can't do this anymore we're going broke you have to be careful uh but <laughs> it's, it's, it's a light side dark side test uh but yeah uh, i just uh yeah it, it, it's very tempting to go on ebay and just look at those numbers it's it's tempting it's tempting yeah. it'd be hard not to but yeah i'm with you joseph oh i got five lukes one for me the rest uh maybe two for me all right, two, <laughs> all right three for me one open i'll open one which would seem scared. Uh, any figures going back to this original? I mean, they, they got uh, was it uh, Death Squad Commander? This is all the the, the original Kenner mm-hmm. stuff. Any figures you'd want to bid on, and how high would you be prepared to go, Jen? You know, an original Leia, original Han. What do you got here? Mm-hmm. I want the Leia in a Bausch disguise. That mm. would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, of course. All eight Ewoks, please. Of course. <laughs> um, I liked the the Ponda Baba, it, but he's you know on his card. It's like Walrus Man. That mm-hmm. right yeah. there uh, is fantastic. Yeah. But I mean, I love them all. They're all just so precious. That's uh, Pouch is a great call. Great call there, um, Joseph. You and you made me think. There is an there is a one Kenner one I'd want of the Ewoks. Um, it's the forgotten Ewok. Do you all know which one I'm talking about? We got our Tebos and our Poplus and our Sherpas uh, and Logres. Lumat, I believe. Yeah, I think it's yes. That's the one. That's the one. He's forgotten. He's an overlooked Ewok from the vintage Kenner era. I think I'd want to get a hold of that one there, but uh, yeah. Anyway. I can't look it up here online right now. Yeah, yeah, no, because I, 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 I have a lot of these, not all, you know, all out of the package and and, and loved. But yeah, L- Lumot's just like your super basic Ewok. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is there, yeah, Lumot. You're so right. There's a Warwick and a Ramba, uh, War War Ock and a Ramba as well. Jen, I'm going to need you to do a documentary on these forgotten Ewoks. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I, I mean. Can Oof, the six six complete vintage Star Wars Ewok action figures on eBay, including mm-hmm. Lumont and Paplu, $475. And they're not even in the case. You know, they're just like loose. Yeah. 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 I'm looking at a Lumont is going for $750. <laughs> this is this is big business. Oh, yeah. And the, yeah. Roomba, Roomba, Romba. I'm saying Roomba because he's cleaning my carpet right now. <laughs> Romba and Warrock. We're from 1985, so their power of the force last line. That's yeah, amazing. they're they're the end. They they were the ones that you could find when you couldn't find uh, Stormtrooper Luke, who I coveted. Mm. There you go, uh, Joseph. I think I didn't let you answer there. Who are you? Who are you plunking a lot of money down on? Yeah, so like uh, I, I think for me, like like I said, I'm lucky to have a lot of these. Not all mm. of them by any means, uh, but the, you know my my loose original figures. Some of them in very rough shape, and part of the reason I love action figures is just like not just the figure, but the art of the card in the, in the frozen moment in time. So that's what would make me want it. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, to me, the walrus man action figure with that, like weird photo, like, you know, some of the photos are like on the cards are like famous publicity stills. Chewbacca's, you know, picture on his card is like a famous publicity still from or f- freeze frame from A New Hope. <laughs> right. And Walrus Man's is just sort of like his production photo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like his ID for for his day job, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then and then the, the picture of him right on the card. 
which looks so different when what the actual action figure is wearing. And then you get to pick, do I want one with the uh, free send away for free Boba Fett sticker or without? Cause they have both. Ah, so much great variety. Uh, so I want that. Um, I, I, I think I've lost my original Obi-Wan Kenobi. So uh, I, that's the Ooh, one I would probably yeah. like bid on if I had the money. Mm. Yeah, I, I was going to go. I mean, obviously I'm going to, you know, maybe try to collect some Hans. That's a great cho- choice on uh, Bausch with that Leia. I think uh, combat poncho Leia, all the ones that I never got. Again, this is uh, or or didn't keep from my infamous garage sale uh, loss of the figures in, in 84. Uh, 8045 range. So yeah, those were, but a Kenobi popped into my mind or, and Kenobi Vader like that. Cause mm. I, it, I might be still basking in the glory of 2022 here with Kenobi and Vader in the rematch, but I think I would love to bid on those figures. Um, I'd have to sell figures I find first to fund buying these figures, but yeah, the Panero, that's where I'd go. Original Leia too. There, there's just something so clean and so, uh, just precise about, uh, you know, this, this character and, and I never had original Leia, and it's it's a wound that must be healed someday. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Same with like original Lando, all those kind of things there as well. Yeah. Uh, final question, final question, and Joseph, we'll start with you here. Which which of these figures might appear on Figure Fights coming your way February <laughs> on the Force Center YouTube channel? Uh, eventually, all of them. But <laughs> to start with, uh, Prune Face is a big contender because come on. Uh, I love that there's just an action figure very late in the run named Prune Face. I didn't even really give him a Star Wars blaster. He comes with like this, you know, rifle that looks like it was, you know, stolen out of a Lone Ranger action figure. Uh, And then the one that's making a ton of uh, news here, uh, the double telescoping (laughs) lightsaber Luke, uh, the one that only came with the early bird packaging, uh, early bird send away thing, and has the ridiculously disturbingly double long yellow lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. It's the one that's going to go for like $20,000. Jen, uh, you'll be appearing on Figure Fights uh, from time to time. Any of these figures you want to see in action? I want a Cantina Brawl for <laughs> sure. <laughs> right? Between quote unquote Hammerhead, aka mm-hmm. Moment of Dawn, and maybe Sna- well, Snaggletooth. That wouldn't be that fair of a fight <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> there's some Cantina characters that could fight, or of course, a Droid Showdown. Could be very Ooh. fun. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Oh, I can't wait. I love breakaway C3PO. There's a lot of weapons to use. <laughs> he's weapons. got a sack. He's got a, he's got a vinyl sack. Uh, well, fun story to end our discussion on the news there. Big toy fine. What would you do with those toys? Let us know. Before we head on out of here, we're going to go to this week in Star Wars history, looking ahead to Star Wars Pass, though this one's actually uh, at the time of the release of this episode, yesterday, but on the day that we're recording. Do you follow that? Here we go. On January 9th, 1987, Star Tours opened up at Disneyland in Anaheim, California. The first attraction at the theme park to feature I IP that was not original to Disney, the motion simulator ride cost $32 million to make, $500,000 for each of the four military grade uh, motion simulators I was looking up. And it was open for 60 hours straight from January 9th to January 11th of 1987. The ride featured Anthony Daniels uh, as C3PO, Ben Burt uh, as R2D2 for what it, uh, it's worth there. We're putting together the sounds. And of course, Maybe most famously, at least for me, this peewee kid of the 80s, Paul Rubens as the Star Tours pilot, Captain RX-24, a.k.a. Rex. Now he's at the cantina spinning tunes. So the ride has undergone many changes over the years, has remained mostly the same, and keeps taking fans into the Star Wars story and maybe making them sick along the way. What is our relationship with this ride and this big debut? Now, Joseph, I do want to start with you. You were uh, not blessed to be in Southern California like Jen and I were. You probably were watching from afar. That might be the start of your journey. Oh, yes. This, I remember hearing about this because, you know, 87 at at that time, you know, from my uh, youthful perspective, it felt like 40 years. uh, You know, (laughs) it's been 84 years since Star Wars was popular. So I was thrilled to see on the news that a Star Wars thing was happening. Uh, But it was, it's like, great. I also understand that sometimes people go to the moon. I will never be there. It was (laughs) utter fantasy to me that that I could experience this. So I was like, cool, great. Uh, congrats to those people who get to experience this i never will my family did not travel we didn't have money so it was utter fantasy to me good for you yeah that's that's, (laughs) i I wasn't that that bitter about it but uh, it was just one of those like yeah no that's uh that's cool not gonna happen 
Uh, I love I, one of the big points is there is you are right in 1987. Even for me, a Star Wars loving kid, like that's it's like oh this is still going. Oh, mm-hmm. that's amazing! More Star Wars. Other people like it. Yeah, it definitely felt like, like that way. Uh, we'll we'll come back to maybe some of your later experiences, Joseph. But Jennifer, I think you kind of uh, even grew up closer to Disneyland than me. Yeah. Yeah, I did, and uh, I, I'm I'm sad to say I, I feel weird sharing this now. Joseph, hearing your story, <laughs> my dad was a reporter back in the day, and at that time, Disney really courted the press, the news media. He had a silver pass, so mm. we could go to Disneyland anytime. It was amazing, and uh, he took me. Actually, I think I shared the story in um, Happy Beeps. Uh, I went to the opening for Star Tours wow. when I was a kid. It was only the, the media that was invited. And, you know, this was not influencer day. This was like <laughs> old school reporters, a bunch <laughs> of older men. And I think maybe there were a handful of kids and me. And I went on the ride with my dad and he gets terrible motion sickness. And he was like, I cannot, this was awful. <laughs> but he wanted to know like what, what my opinion of it was, you know, cause he wanted to do the story on it. That's why they invited him. And then I went on it at least like three more times mm-hmm. and just me and the bunch of old men. And <laughs> it was mind blowing. It was like, mm. I felt like I was in star Wars. I mm. could not believe that this ride had transported me into this world. And then yeah. it used to lead into, well, still does lead into the gift shop. And they had mm-hmm. a whole wall full of Ewoks. I can still <gasps> remember it. And I did not ask my dad for one. And to this day, I regret <laughs> not getting that Ewok plush from Tomorrowland. Yeah. Uh, this is this is beautiful. I'm happy to hear this. This this sounds almost like your your beginnings as a Star Wars journalist. Like, did you have your notebook <laughs> out when you're like, <laughs> I'm jotting down some thoughts for my article? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I was trying to like, I really was trying because I knew my dad was going to ask me questions because he was going to interview me as along with other people because he's like, I don't want to uh, interview a bunch of like <laughs> newsmen who just went on this ride. Like I need <laughs> real people. Right. And I was like trying to remember, OK, what emotion did I feel and what was yeah. the character's name? And like I was oh. <laughs> trying to analyze it like, uh, yeah. Does this, does this footage exist anywhere? Your father, uh, Mike, right? Award winning yeah. journalist. Yeah. Yeah. Orange I, he, he, you know, he probably has it somewhere, oh. some audio of it. I should find it. And I did the same thing for Splash Mountain as well. That was really fun. <laughs> and I think that was that was the end of that. Then they they got rid of that. No. Yeah. I'd love to see young Jed Landa going, well, that ride's kind of problematic, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. um, that's amazing. If you could find that footage of that audio and, and that's make gold. it short, you've got yeah. gold. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Ken, what was your experience? Yeah. Uh, well, it's definitely not as cool as that. Um, but I was I was local enough, about three hours away. Uh, my grandparents lived, uh, in fact, the house is still there. They only passed away recently. L- is right around the corner. Every time we, we'd hear the fireworks and could see them from the second level of my grandparents' mm. house that my grandfather wow. built by himself in 1970. Uh, so I, I, we did get to go. And and this, this article actually helped zero in for me when I went. Because I've always thought that I was relatively i went relatively close to the opening i do kind of remember that but i was like no i better not think uh it is the opening and i was doing i think i went over the spring break in 1987 which is not mm. a problem for us to go down to anaheim from uh, central coast of california and because i definitely was there in the early stages it was one of the only things i you know i did because I, I i'm like you joseph if, if if it was at mall of america i'd be like i don't even i'm never going there uh, <laughs> it's never gonna happen we're, we're, we can't take a volkswagen van or a, a subaru station wagon out to minnesota uh so uh, i was fortunate and excited again it, joseph you're very right like that's three long years, five long years, mm. basically, you're looking at by four or five years from uh, Return of the Jedi. And by this point, I'm collecting baseball cards more and more. And it was like, oh, this is this is the thing. And and uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I I can't go on the ride now. I get sick now. Did not as a kid. Uh, so whiskey and Star Tours, things I've lost over the last few years uh, that I can't <laughs> have. But um, I, I really loved it. And I, I'm one of those ones that can get, uh, you know, pulled in. I love I've I've. Even on this podcast, he complained about some of the newer updates of Star Tours are so not canon. It bothered me, <laughs> like sitting in the ride going, ah, I didn't want to show up here. What are you talking about? Uh, but I love it. I love the legacy of the ride. I love that Ryan Johnson designed uh, with his team crate and the crate sequence with the Falcon to impart, you know, inspired by uh, Star Tours. And now it's part of Star Tours. I love that. 
I love that story. I love the legacy. And I love that once again, Star Wars is there at the forefront. We had this, this partnership emerged out of Captain EO. Yeah. Uh, and through that, they go into this and, and Lucas and everyone make have this made. And Imagineers working with Lucas, uh, uh, you know, Industrial Lights and Magic people on this ride. Fascinating. And now it's, you know, we associate Disney with other brands, clearly, as their portfolio has grown and will maybe continue to grow over the years. Um, but uh, this was one of the first times I remember, like, that Disney it could be connected with another Thing that wasn't itself, you know, right? Because yeah. it was, it turns out it was. But I think even looking back, and I remember, you know, when um when when the sale happened, it just kind of seemed like, well, yeah, that it wasn't it always part of Disney. <laughs> like, wasn't it always there? Totally new Lucasfilm was its own thing. But anyways, this ride inspires a lot of memories that get me choked up. Yeah, yeah. no, and, it, and it's fascinating to think of this ride as the beginning of you know what might eventually lead to the sale that Disney you know, has had its ups and downs as, as documented by their own documentaries, like yeah. the, you know, industrial light and magic uh, documentary, but yeah. that they, the company has tried to keep storytelling and the magic of storytelling uh, alive while also being the company designed to make as much money as humanly possible. Uh, but <laughs> that, that experience that Lucas had with, okay, while being a, a giant corporation company, you're still trying to keep this magic of storytelling. Mm that this might, you know, be the beginning of like, well, uh, when he's going to sell Star Wars, this is, who else is he going to sell it to? Like, it's pretty fascinating to look at the the Star Tours for the beginning of all that is to come. <laughs> if you could go ask George right now, uh, if you could go back in time, would you take it to Universal Studios? <laughs> No, no. I love the ride now. I'm really, I'm really, really lucky because I I didn't mean to be a total bummer about my reaction in 1987. Um, No, no, no. Glad, uh, glad that I was wrong in 1987. I wish I could uh, experience uh, the very original ride. I did a podcast many years ago with my friend Molly Lewis, phenomenal uh, singer, songwriter. Check her out on TikTok. She doesn't have a ton of videos, but the ones that are there are hilarious, including a great uh, song about. Ponda Baba. Um, <laughs> but uh, podcast, uh, early episode of Obsessed that we did live, uh, she was talking about being obsessed with Star Tours because she lived uh, nearby and recited the entire ride verbatim accurately wow. on a podcast. <laughs> that, that was how deeply uh, she knew it. Uh, so I'm bummed that I never got to experience the original, original version, but it's so immersive. It's so fun. I love mm-hmm. it. Um, Mm. I love waiting in line and there's the the snarky baggage droid who says, uh, you're headed to Mustafar. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just, you know, going through Geonosis and the seismic charges. And it's just, it, it's, it's so nice and straightforward. You just get to wo- whoosh through Star Wars worlds and it's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember being in line as a, uh, as a, uh, as a kid, uh, whether from 87 or even into the 90s when I would go a little bit more, like wondering like, well, okay, where where were these ships in Return of the Jedi? Were they part of the fight? Where, 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 <laughs> love it. Well, there you have it. Uh, a look back, a look ahead, whatever you want to say. We're looking at Star Tours, the history and legacy of a lot there. So uh, what are your memories of Star Tours? Do you have any pictures? Do you have any, were you interviewed by Jen's dad in 1987? <laughs> Do you have clips of it? Please let us know. <laughs> uh, we're almost out of here today, but before we do, we're going to let you know where you can find us. We're on Twitter at Force Center Pod. Uh, we're also on uh, so- uh, Hive Social at Force Center. We are on Instagram and, as we mentioned, YouTube figure fights coming soon. Which one of those pristine Kenner figures will appear in it? We'll find out. Uh, our Facebook page is Force Center Podcast. We're available on a lot of spots Acast, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash Force Center. A couple of our Force Center friends in Discord posted that they got like the prequel shirt and everything in advance of Star Wars Celebration London. So, hey, Head to that if you want to do as well. You can support us directly at patreon.com slash force center. Uh, you can follow me at Ken Napsock. Go to my website, kennapsock.com. My new podcast of Blathering drops on the Napsock Network podcast feed uh, tomorrow. So check that out. Uh, Jen, where can they find you and any old clips of interviews with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask my dad. He'll be tickled that we talked about that. Um, let's see. You can find me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, at Jennifer Landa, TikTok at Jennifer Landa 1138. And I'm coming out of vacation mode to start making <laughs> some things again. I will get there. I will get there. So stay tuned for that. Mm, good stuff. Good stuff. Joseph, uh, where can I find you or any old interviews you were on? 
<laughs> well, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, I don't want people to find my old interviews. I was going to almost say it in old interview. I did. I don't want people digging. Uh, anyway, a little mystery is good. Yeah. Uh, you can find me now on all the social media at Joseph Scrimshaw, Instagram in particular, I, I would love to build. I'm still on Twitter, on Hive, on Mastodon, just uh, search for Joseph Scrimshaw, all those places. Uh, I will get back to making some uh, not unboxing videos on TikTok on and YouTube, but uh, like Jennifer, I've been in uh, recovering from vacation and getting uh, to work on a bunch of other creative stuff mode, but that is coming soon. Uh, I also do have, uh, hopefully by the end of the month, I have a new short film uh, that I'll be putting out on on YouTube, so go find me on YouTube. Amazing. Absolutely, go do it. I was trying. I, I I have I have maybe some newspaper articles from the Times Press Recorder and Royal Grande. That's about it for me. No, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> there you go, everybody. Thank you for uh, listening today. Through the rumors, through the history, and the toy collections out there, a lot of fun. We'll see you next time here on Force Center.